welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over what I consider to be the absolute basic necessities that you need if you want to get started in the world of crochet. I'm not going to be showing you any techniques or stitches or patterns or anything in this video. I'll be doing that later, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, this is geared toward absolute beginners who have never picked up a crochet hook before and who are looking you know, to get started and what they need to purchase in order to get started. So, with that being said, if you're a seasoned crocheter, you, you just need to skip all of this and check out some of my other videos because this is, this is going to bore you. But, for all my beginners, this is what I would tell you to go out and buy at the store right now if you're wanting to get started. So, first of all, you're going to need a hook, of course. <laughs> you cannot crochet without a hook. So, when you go to the store, there's going to be tons of hooks hanging on the wall, and it can get a bit confusing. But this right here is just your basic aluminum crochet hook. They cost anywhere from $1.29 to $1.39, you know, at Walmart. At least that's what they cost in my area. Um, you can find them anywhere. Michael's, you know, Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, Joann's, pretty much anywhere. Um, if you check out your thrift stores, like the Goodwill or any little secondhand stores, I've seen them, you know, in bundles of 10 for a dollar, you know. So you never know when you can get a good deal on them. So just keep an eye out. That's the basic hook. This, this is what you need to get started. All of these don't matter. This is what you need. I just happen to have these because I like them. For me, I hold my hook just a little bit differently than most people. I kind of hold mine between my thumb and index finger so it can pivot this way. And I guide it with my middle finger like this. So I needed a hook that would cushion my thumb and also be you know, like smooth enough to be able to not catch on my skin. Because this one right here, it hurts my hand after a while. When I have like my, my 10 hour crochet marathons, and I'm going like 100 miles an hour, this one hurts my hand. So this one, it is costly. It's ugly as homemade sin, but it's costly. To me, it's costly. This one was $8, $8.99, something like that. And I got it at Joann's. But this little, this little cushiony part right here, it's perfect for me. And what I would suggest to you is when you go to the store, just pick up a bunch of different types of hooks, hold them in your hand, see what feels the most comfortable for you. Whatever is the most comfortable for you is the one that you need to buy. No matter what I say, the one that you like is the one that you need to buy because you're going to be the one using it. But this one is my favorite. Now, some people hold their, their hook like this and hook this way. Not me. I cannot do that. And I, I really hate this hook. I'm probably going to throw it away when I get done with this video because I can't stand it. But this one I want to say was right at $4. And it's covered in like this soft, like rubbery type stuff. But for me, it catches, you know, on my skin like right here. It, I can't, I can't pivot. It, it's just, it doesn't work for me. But I would sell it for people that may would have some arthritis or, you know, stiffness in, in their joints and difficulty holding on to these skinnier hooks, this would be a really good option for you. It's, it's soft and it's, it's gentle on your hands. So I, I would recommend this to anyone that would have problems with these. Um, this hook here, yeah, it, it is large. This is a large hook. And I got it because I was making some hanging baskets out of t-shirt yarn. And you would also use this, let's say if you were using like the Bernat blanket yarn, you would use this. Um, this came from Hobby Lobby. It's made by Yarnology. And for as pretty as it is, it was only $2.99. And of course, I have a 40% off coupon. You know me and my coupons. So yeah, I had a coupon. And like I said, this one is fairly large. Now, as pretty as these are, I believe they start at a size 6. So, you know, if you're using a normal size yarn, they're really not going to have one that you're going to want to use. But if you get into the bigger plies, like more than four ply yarn, um, they have a really nice selection. Different colors, different designs. I think they had like a green one with butterflies on it and yellow one with tulips on it. It's really pretty. So there's an option for you. And this one is solid plastic. So I have not had this hook very long. I don't know how durable they are. But, yeah, for, for the aesthetic purposes, you know, it's, it's not very much. Whoopsie. Now, <laughs> let's say you want to crochet in a dark bathroom or a closet where you can hide from the kids and the dog and the cat and you can eat cookies and crochet in peace. 
This hook lights up. It's called the crochet light. It's probably a little bit cheaper than this hook here. I think I got this for $7.99. And it was at Hobby Lobby. Once again, I used a coupon. <laughs> but um, it is very helpful if you're using very, very dark colored yarn as well. Um, black yarn, dark blue, dark brown. They can be very difficult to see if you don't have, you know, optimal lighting. So I found this to be very helpful when I'm using black. And this is in a smaller size. This is a 4.5, which is what I use when I'm making stuffed animals, when I want my stitches to be tight and more uniform. I use this. So there's a hook for you. But to get started, just go grab you one of these off the rack at Walmart. As you can see, I have plenty. Alrighty, let's move on to our yarn. 90% of the time I'm using, and you see I tore my label, <laughs> I'm using Red Heart Super Saver yarn, okay? You can find this at Walmart for $2.99 a skein. Um, Joann's, I believe, is $3.49, $3.29, $3.49, somewhere in there. Um, very inexpensive, but I consider it to be good quality. Um, I've used it in pretty much every single project that is not a dishcloth or, you know, a specialty item. It doesn't stretch out of shape. It doesn't warp. It doesn't fade. I, it's probably the only type of yarn that I would recommend to anyone that is, you know, pinching pennies and is, is a beginner. Just just go get you some Red Heart. And I will tell you this. when you When you buy your yarn, if you look at the label right here, Coral, that is the color. Okay, the color is coral. Now, if you look back at the front, you'll see this says no dye lot. What that means is certain yarns near the color name will have a dye lot and then a series of numbers. And when you buy that particular color, you need to make sure that the dye lot numbers match each other. Because they were dyed, of course, in separate lots, dye lot, dyed in separate lots. So... One coral may be darker or lighter than what you already have. And it might be just a few shades different, but believe me, you're really going to be able to tell it. Like if you're in the middle of making an afghan or something, and it, it can be difficult to find yarn with all matching dye lots if you don't buy enough of it right then and there. And that's the good thing about Red Heart. Um, pretty much all of their yarn, except maybe like a few ombres, you know, are no dye lots. And I think it's a pretty good value for the price. This is this is my favorite. This is, you know, what my grandmother used, what I use, and <laughs> what I tell other people to use. So, there's that. Of course, you're going to need, let's see. Well, you don't have to have these. I highly recommend them. But, you know, like I said, if you're pinching pennies, you want to get started for under 10 bucks. You know, you don't need these because this little container... Right here was $5. And what it is, is stitch markers. Okay. What a stitch marker is, it's basically just a little thing that you clip onto your yarn when you're making fairly large projects or small projects, you know, just to help you keep count of where you are and to mark important places in your work. Um, they work pretty much like a safety pin. You just unfasten them like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Slip it into your work. Fasten it back, and you know, it marks a space. Actually, I'm doing a video on how to make granny squares, and I'm using them here um, just for teaching purposes. As you can see, I have the stitch markers in here showing where the corners are. Now, at the moment, I'm in the process of making a Sophie's Universe, and I think at one point I had 20-something stitch markers in there, you know, marking the special points you know, of, of stitches that you really, really needed to pay close attention to. You can use bits of yarn, you know, to mark corners like this, to mark stitches. Those can fall out. They can be, you know, hard to untie if you tie them in. They can be hard to untie. So I don't recommend doing that. Now, you can buy a pack of, I think it was around 20 plastic stitch markers for around $2.00. I don't recommend using those because after a while, there's a little pivot point right here. Open and close, open and close. Eventually, they're going to break. Believe me, I was in the middle of that Sophie's Universe and all of my stitch markers were breaking. And I was so mad. I was about to throw it across the room. 
So I just went and I got these. These will last a good long time. There's 200 of them in this little container. So really for the price, it's not that bad. You know, and um, this did, did come from Walmart. Again, you can find these at any craft store. But the next thing that you're really going to need, this is very important, and this is a yarn needle. See, it looks just like a regular sewing needle, only the eye is a lot bigger. The end is blunt. You you can't impale yourself. Well, I guess I could, you know, with a, with a little bit of effort, you could impale yourself with it. But what this is for is at the end of your project or in the middle of wherever, if you're like me and you don't work the ends of your yarn in from the beginning and after every time you change color, um, this is going to help you to finalize your project. When you change colors and you have, you know, inches of yarn just hanging loose everywhere, you thread this needle with it and then you sew it into your project to give it a nice clean look. It's called working away your ends. Um, this is pretty much a necessity. You can get a pack of three or four of these for around $2 at Walmart. You know, you, you really do need to pick up one of these. I have seen people use a small crochet hook to work away the ends, but you risk picking your yarn and, and making a mess. And don't I don't suggest doing that. Just get a pack of these and you'll be all right. And of course, common sense will tell you that you need a pair of scissors. These are probably my favorite. These come from Walmart, once again. Uh, they're between $15 and $20 a pair. I agree that's a little bit crazy to pay for a small pair of scissors. In fact, I have two of them. <laughs> uh, but any pair of scissors that you have is absolutely fine. These are like $20. Bucks. These came from the Dollar Tree. You know... Anything that you can use to cut your yarn, use a steak knife, I don't care. However you can get your yarn cut, chew it in half. You know, <laughs> whatever works for you, works. So, you know, this this, this just whatever can um is sharp and can cut. So, these are pretty large. If you have a small crochet bag or box, whatever you keep your supplies in, you know, get a smaller pair. And again, you can find smaller pair at the dollar store, too. So... There's those. And you also need something to carry your work in. This is a cosmetics bag. I cut off the clearance rack at Walmart. Um, I like it because it's padded. I mean, you see like all this padding here. So like if I have a, a rogue needle or something, it's loose in there. It's not going to, you know, poke through the side really easily and hurt anybody. So I recommend getting a zippered bag to keep all of your goodies in. That way you can just grab it, you can throw it in your handbag, throw it in, you know, whatever, backpack, whatever. If you're like me, I drag my yarn around with me everywhere so that I'm never bored. I get bored easily. So I'm never bored when I drag my stuff around. But that is it. I mean, you know, just to get started, there, there's not a lot that you need here. You need a hook, yarn, scissors, yarn needle, a bag to keep it in, you know, and if you want to get fancy smancy, go get you some stitch markers. But like I said, you can use a piece of yarn. I'll show you how to do that in a later video. So, I do appreciate you stopping by here and watching what I have to say. If you keep an eye out on my channel at a later date, I'm actually in the process of working on some more videos right now. I cannot guarantee when I'll have them up. But if you could, just make a little clicky click down below on that little subscribe button. And for every time you watch this video, I do get just a little smidgen of money, you know, from the ads that pop up on here. So, not only are you helping me to buy yarn, you're helping to pay me for my time to keep these videos coming to you. And believe me, you're going to want to see more of my videos when I get more in-depth with teaching you the different stitches and different techniques. I'll also be teaching you how to make a baby blanket with one simple stitch. One stitch. You can make a beautiful baby blanket. That's going to be my next project, aside from a granny square that I will teach you guys. So, keep an eye out for that. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.